With the top bearing insulation cap removed, note the alignment of the V-band relative to the evaporator. Using a ratchet and a 7 16 inch deep socket, loosen the nut on the upper V-band and remove the V-band. Lift the top bearing assembly straight up with a slight rotating motion to remove. If the bearing assembly is stuck, place the tip of a chisel or screwdriver under the upper flange of the top bearing housing and strike vertically with a hammer. Do not drive the chisel or screwdriver horizontally between the bearing housing and the evaporator flange as damage will result. Note that ice makers on Symphony Plus dispensers have an O-ring between the top bearing and the evaporator. Verify that the O-ring is in place on the bearing housing. Lift and remove the ice compression loop. Grasp the auger shaft and lift and remove the auger. Remove the insulating jacket from the evaporator, taking care to separate the Velcro sections and not tear the Velcro from the insulation. Note the alignment of the lower V-band to the evaporator. When reinstalled, the V-bands must be aligned in the same position for the nut and threaded rod to fit under the evaporator insulation. Using the ratchet and the 7 16 inch deep socket, loosen the nut on the lower V-band and open the V-band to lower it below the evaporator and mounting base flanges. Lift and raise the evaporator up and off of the mounting base. There is enough play in the refrigeration lines to allow this without having to access the refrigeration system. Using a 5 16 inch nut driver, loosen the set screw on the side of the mounting base. Back the screw out several turns. Lift and remove the lower bearing assembly from the evaporator mounting base. If the bearing is stuck, it can be loosened using a large channel lock style wrench. Grip the lower bearing housing at the evaporator O-ring and jiggle back and forth to loosen the bearing housing in the mounting base. Use a finger to check the top bearing for end play on the coupling. There should be no detectable movement in and out of the housing. Use the auger to turn the bearing to check for smoothness. The bearing should turn smoothly, no roughness or grittiness. On a newer bearing, stiffness is normal, but roughness is not acceptable. Inspect the cutting edge of the auger helix, known as the auger flight. It should be smooth, showing no signs of scoring. If the auger flight has been damaged from contact with the evaporator, the auger will have to be replaced. Note that the Follett 400 425 series evaporators have a crosshatch pattern in the evaporator wall. This is what a normal 400 or 425 evaporator surface looks like. The crosshatch pattern helps the ice grip to the evaporator wall properly, but is occasionally mistaken for scoring. If there is no damage to the auger flight, then the auger has not scored the evaporator. Check the ice compression loop for twist by placing it on a smooth, flat surface and check for rocking or wobbling. Flip it over and check the other side. If rocking or wobbling is detected, the loop must be replaced before the ice maker can be returned to service. Inspect the tip of the loop for wear. Wear marks near the bevels are normal. The end of the loop should not look bright and shiny. This is extreme wear and an indication of an ice maker that is operating at excessively high internal pressure. The cause must be identified and corrected. Test the lower bearing by pressing down firmly on the shaft and turning the shaft. It should turn smoothly with no roughness or flat spots. Rotate the shaft and verify that the ceramic mating ring turns with the shaft. Rotate the assembly and visually inspect the ceramic mating ring and the face seal for cracks, chips, and imperfections. Visually inspect the condition of the grease at the open underside of the bearing assembly. Replace any lower bearing that is rough, has a ceramic mating ring that does not turn with the auger shaft, has any damage to the mating ring or face seal, or has degraded or washed out grease in the bearing.